Hi everyone and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. If you are new here then you can click subscribe or follow me on any of my social medias to keep up to date with all the latest content. Today I'm going to be doing a video to help you with your mocks or the actual external exam on how to maximise your time efficiency and therefore get maximum marks on AQA Paper 1. Now, if you want to fully understand what is going to be on those papers and the types of questions, then make sure you watch from the start. If you'd rather skip straight to my three top tips for paper one, then have a look at the time codes at the bottom and skip straight to those tips. So what to expect from paper one? This is just showing you what is coming up on all three of the AQA A-level biology papers. Now if you don't take AQA this bit is not relevant however some of the top tips later on will still be relevant to you so you might want to skip to that section. The main thing I want to focus on is this bit at the bottom though. So 76 of the 91 marks are a mixture of long and short answer questions but 15 of those marks are extended response. Now I have got a whole video on how to get maximum marks on extended response questions and I'll link that up here so you can go and see that if you haven't already. Um, but that's going to be key to the strategy. It's a two hour paper, all three of them are, but for some reason paper one in particular students really struggle with the timing and I think it's because there's a lot of questions that require a lot of reading and I'll show you that later on. The next thing to point out is the types of questions. So it said you're going to get short and long answer questions, but what kind of skill will they be? So I've just given you what the different assessment objectives mean over here on the left hand side. So when we look at this table, it makes a bit more sense. So for paper one, you can expect almost half of the questions will be testing your knowledge and understanding. And only about a third will test your application. So there shouldn't be as many application questions on paper one as there are on paper two. AO3, which is your analysis, interpreting and evaluating scientific information, approximately a quarter or just under. And paper one makes up 35% um, of your entire A-level grade. And just as an ongoing pointer, you can expect 10% of your whole A-level will be maths questions. So you do really need to make sure you are practicing these maths questions and skills. Um, and again, I've got a maths playlist up here. You can check that out if you think you need some support. So my top tips then. I've got three. I'm going to talk you through all three of them. So first of all, for every single question, bullet point your answers. Do not write in paragraphs because it's easy for you to start to waffle and it makes it harder for the marker to spot your mark points. So bullet point it to speed you up, reduce waffle and make it easier for the examiner to be able to find your answers. Always think when you're answering any question, which key term have I put in here? Because it's all about the key terms in biology. It might also be what information from the question have I used? Because so many of the questions say, use all the information from the question to help you answer. So think, can I use some information from this question within my answer? And then the final one is the real strategic point that I'm gonna emphasize. Start on question 10, and I'll come back to that one. So first, let's have a look at one and two. And this does overlap with the video that I've already done that I talked about at the start, how to answer the long answer questions. Um, what I go through with those five top tips does actually apply to short answer questions as well. So bullet point your answers. And I've got an example here. This happens to be a long um, answer question. It's six marks. And you might have written a whole long paragraph and it starts to get harder for you to check your keywords have you covered everything so don't just do bullet point lists with headings you can even have tables separate your answer into tables this is absolutely acceptable in an aqa exam you do not have to write in continuous prose and paragraphs except for the essay and in fact in the examiner's report they often say they prefer this because it's far easier for them to mark. So bullet point your answers, 
have subheadings if needed, do as a table. I've also, if you notice, put in bold all the key terms. So in an exam, maybe underline every time you've used a key term or phrase, firstly to help you check your answer, but more importantly, to make it easier for the examiner to mark. Because examiners are humans, they do make mistakes, they miss marks. So make sure you are making it as easy as possible for them to mark, and therefore they're less likely to miss a mark. Next then, is starting on question 10. So I'm just going to show you here the um, an example of a paper one. So we're scrolling through all of the earlier questions and you can see here there's lots of questions with data, with information, um, calculations and all of that takes a long time to read and process. And often they are really difficult questions and you might not pick up as many marks as you could on some of the questions at the end. Now, something else I want to point out is you might notice that in some of these questions, it's two marks, but there's loads of lines. You do not have to fill that space. The point of that is to make sure that you never end up having to ask for extra paper. So if it's two marks, that might still only be two bullet points. So I've paused it now so we can see the question 10. And question 10 is always 15 marks and it's generally speaking just knowledge questions. So we've got the first one here for five marks, explain five properties of water that make um, water important for organisms. Then if we carry on, we'll see um, what the next one is. So 10.2 is also gonna be worth five marks. And this one is described in biochemical tests you'd use to confirm the presence of different molecules. And then the last one we've got is describe the chemical reaction involved in the conversion of polymers to monomers. So in total, it was 15 marks and it's three questions, which are five marks each. Now, 15 marks is a huge proportion of the paper that is knowledge based. So start on question 10, try and bag those 15 marks or as close to 15 as possible because otherwise if you start at the beginning and spend all that time reading and processing and challenging yourself on the hard questions sometimes people run out of time and they don't even get onto question 10 which is typically the easiest question to get lots of marks so those are my top tips definitely start on question 10 once you've answered that and that should calm your nerves because they're slightly easier questions then go back to the beginning and start from there as you go through bullet points, highlight key terms, make sure you're using key terms and where relevant, use information from the question. So that is it, the paper one strategy. Try it out on your mocks, see how it goes and then definitely use it for your actual exams later on in the year.